We're live. We're doing it. I love that I'm never pressured to. <laughs> You're just like always here for it. Right. And I'm like, I don't. I'm what good. do I do? I'm going to dance. I'm gonna dance. <laughs> um. Welcome to the Ring of Fire, guys. It's another week and another time, and I need to silence that. That was just rude of me. Um, where we talk about tough topics and uh, do fun things like talk about our personality tests and like cool things that define us as yes. human beings with labels from tests. I'm so excited. Oh, I remembered what I was going to talk about. Ah! It's not a current event. It's about how... The Myers-Briggs test is racist and has, like, racist eugenics Yes, it does. It was also backs, developed backgrounds? by people who did not know anything about personality tests. Uh, they were essentially uh, astrolo- <laughs> astrology slash, like, scam artists. Anyway, that's uh, okay. Side note, it's still fun. It's so fun. I'm excited to, um, like, see if these things connect with doula work. Because I really think they will. I'm very Ooh, curious. I didn't think about that. Yeah, that's why we did this episode. Because <laughs> doula work and my personal yeah, test. This is a doula <laughs> podcast. We just remember. Emmy just remembered that we are a podcast for doulas. <laughs> it just occurred to her. Uh, y'all, um, I was at a birth yesterday. <laughs> Be prepared for like the, the birth hangover brain where it's like, there was a point. During that birth, it was really funny. It was at the towards the end. We just needed to keep the water warm for mama and baby, and so midwife's like, "Hey, go grab um, the hot water pitcher, right, and pour it with half the hot water and half tap water." And so I like was like, "Got it." Mind you, it was like one a.m. Grab it. I walk over to the sink and I was like, "I know I need hot water," and so I just put hot water into the pitcher and walked back and the midwife's like, that's way too hot for a baby. I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I don't remember I what, what I was, I was asked. Doing. I forgot what I was doing when I walked over. I'm so sorry. Please recommend me again. I promise it's just because it's 1 a.m. 1 a.m. Not because this is how I normally am. The assistant ends up looking at me. And I was like, Oh, that makes way more sense to On me. it. Got it. So much more sense. <laughs> Sorry. So, welcome to our personality test. Do, I'm excited. Do you have the full bit on Myers-Briggs and its origins I and stuff? I don't. There's a really good podcast episode. Um, do you remember the podcast episode? Pick me up. I'm scared. That's what it is. Okay. <laughs> There's a really good podcast episode where they go into I detail of it. I see that thought, like, right here, and you were yes. like, give it to Reaching me. for it. Yes, yeah. Um, there's also a documentary we watched on it that was interesting and talks mm. about the history of it. So, again, it's just fucked up. Right. Right? Yeah. Um, it turns into, so this this leads me to a current event, right? Everybody watched, I've seen a lot of people watching Business of Birth Control. Yeah. Which also turns out that some that Planned Parenthood has some eugenic history Yes, it does. And they they removed the lady's name July of 2020. Yeah. It took them that long. You know, not every organization is perfect. <laughs> I'm just like, when I see that, I'm like, oh, that was a long time. <laughs> like, you, <laughs> you know what I find interesting about that, too, is like, there's not really a thing in the U.S. that's that's been created without some sort of touch of eugenics and yes, you know yeah. former nazi behavior yeah speaking as a jew there's yeah. a couple of things i've interacted with where i'm like and they did what and <laughs> we were just cool with that <laughs> cool and then you know that'll lead us to talking about harry potter and how we can't support jk rowling Not so we JK had to Rowling do here. a knockoff potter <laughs> mort <laughs> so here's um, what we'll start off with this. We're going to be revealing our Myers Briggs, yes, which is still a personality test that's used in, used by Fortune 500 companies. Like this yeah. is something that's given to people, really adhered by. First time I took it, I was 11. My parents gave okay. it to me. Yeah, I I think I was 16. Yeah, like so, I was a teenager. Yeah. Right. Um, 
then Enneagrams, which, which actually, Enneagrams, uh, kind of origin in the New World, in the Americas, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's based off of philosophies that went on during that era. My husband had a guest on his podcast that said Enneagrams were astrology for Christians. They are, because it's been very much appropriated by Christian um, communities. <laughs> Which I loved. And it's because of the basis being about, so with Myers-Briggs, you're breaking down pieces of the personality. Mm -hmm. With Enneagram, you're trying to figure out what great void is that person trying to fill. Mm. So that's, that's why you also get that with Christianity, because yeah. that's a way to like, kind of connect with God kind of thing. Fair. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. And then the third one is Harry Potter because Avi, right? Like, I, I'm... <laughs> We're two nerds doing a podcast. How can we... How like can we avoid... Millennials. Talking, how can we avoid talking about Harry Potter? Can't, can't, can't. And honestly, is there anything more accurate than someone being like, I'm a Gryffindor, and you're like, no, the fuck you ain't. Like, well, and that's why I'm excited to take it because the only time I ever took it, I cheated to make sure I was... Gryffindor, Gryffindor. Oh. which probably means that I'm not in Gryffindor. You're probably the Ravenclaw or Slytherin. Uh, <laughs> because I remember being like, I know if I pick this answer, it will put me in the place I want to go. So I'm very curious to take it, like, honestly. I, I'm, I'm excited. So welcome, guys, um, to our podcast. Kind of a fun episode. Yeah. Um, any other current events? I mean, we could talk for days. I think I'm going to make a whole goddamn episode with you on v -back Link, Can't wait. V-Back Facts, uh, Midwife Malik, which if you guys aren't following her, please follow her and, yeah. and like, support her. Uh, but, yeah, we'll have a whole episode just dedicated Love to it. that because I think there's such a good case study in there about how to use social media uh, correctly mm -hmm. and kindly and giving credit when it's needed yeah. to be gift, uh, given and how we can support each other as a community amongst each other without that pitfall. Yeah. That Perfect. Like, kept falling Stay into. Stay tuned, guys. Right? We'll and do a whole thing. I was talking about business of birth control, which I thought was a good documentary. I don't know if you watched it. The same I did people. not. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, I just saw a lot of people watching it because it was free for two oh, days. Yeah. So yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. everybody needed to watch this. I, I it's meant to do it. I'll just pay for it. The, the gist is, you know, similar to Business of Being Born, if you've ever seen it. It's the same filmmakers. This is the first time this has ever happened. You making references to films and me being like, no, not, not seen it. Usually it's the opposite. Not seen it. Um... But I, it's, I, I thought it was great. It's a lot of information that I think people need to know about. Like, I, th I, think, I think it brings a lot of conversations about informed consent, which I find very interesting. Mm. Because are we truly telling people what they're putting in their body mm -hmm. when they are given birth control? Like, are we truly telling them what the side effects can be? There's a lot of, and they mention it in the, the documentary about how, like, people will say, I'm getting the symptom, and they're told that's not possible. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> right? Love that. So people talk about, like, mood issues, metabolism, metabolism issues, all sorts of stuff, and, like, doctors will be like, I've never heard of that being a side effect. That's funny. Sorry. Um, Must be something else. <laughs> sounds like you're a crazy <laughs> bitch. Yeah. Uh, Which, when I, when I took the step of getting off of birth control and, like, detoxing from that, that was my thing. It's like, I do wish... Maybe I would have still made the right, the same decision, but I do wish someone would have said, hey, these are some of the things they, that, you, that are going to affect you. Here are some alternative options, right? Because we don't really talk about options that aren't hormonal birth control. So I felt like it was an interesting, like, oh. informed consent conversation. Yeah, that is good to know. Um, I, I was never a gal on birth control, so I... I had the one partner who's been very kind to me <laughs> and like made sure of certain things so that we I never had to be on it because yeah. the one time I was I I had a almost a psychotic break so it was not it'll good. do that to you and not then your good. OB will tell you that's not possible <laughs> well funny enough I went through a Planned Parenthood and I went enough. back to the Planned Parenthood and she's like oh no 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 yeah. no no um and handed me that, yeah. other stuff which yeah. gave me. A similar side effect and she's like i i think you should stop yeah. <laughs> which says something when you're at the plane well, and, and they mention in the documentary that even some of the doctors are like i had no idea and you right. find out that like the original study they like kind of 
push some of these things that were showing up uh, under the rug and never like originally shared that and that's where kind of the misinformation comes from. I would love to watch it because yeah. I can't tell you how many people I run into with uteruses that are told to be on birth control to control like right and we all know that's not true y'all right no right (laughs) my only criticism is they do the documentary thing where they're like i'm gonna take a single event that was really tragic and i'm gonna milk the crap out of it so you feel a certain some type of way which oh to connect back to nazis and documentaries you guys ready i i i'm about to do it the very first uh documentary with that style was um was a Nazi propaganda film. Love it. There you go. There's your Love Nazi it. fact of the day. I yay. Anyway, okay. um, let's, let's go with my Briggs. <laughs> Just like a quick, <laughs> a nice quick, little quick transition. One. All right, you go first for Myers Brig. Okay. Um. So I think we should reveal each letter right now. Ready? Okay. So I am an E. What are you? I and that's introvert and extrovert. And I'm then, an extrovert. So no one can tell. Shocking! I am shocked right There's now. There's a reason why you guys call me local celebrity. It's not because I am. It's because I don't know how to not people. Yeah. Like, which means that I am peopling. It's very difficult, but I make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> right. Which probably me shows why we're in the friendship that we are. Because I have a ton of introverts in my life. Yeah. Um. And to define it, extroversion means that you gather energy when you're around people. Yeah. Introverted means that it draws energy away from you. Not that you're shy or outgoing yeah. or like you like people or you don't. And no, you cannot be extroverted only when you're at home at a party. Yeah. Like that's not what this means. Either you enjoy being around people and it, like, fires you up. I'm one that pre-pandemic, my husband used to send me away sometimes just to sit at the mall because <laughs> I needed, like, to sit around pe- people. I needed people. <laughs> Even if I wasn't talking to them just to be able to be like, all right, I feel I feel better. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure you don't have that story in your life. <laughs> <laughs> but it is inter- an interesting thing where people are like, oh, I don't like, um... I don't like, like big parties. I don't so like I'm big parties. So I must be introverted, or even like, well, I like people, so I must be extroverted. And I read there's a great book called Quiet that's all about introversion and like the superpowers of it, and like even like raising children that may be introverted, and like yes. a great book that really made me be like, oh, it's not a bad thing to nope. be introverted, kind of thing. So no, because obviously I can't shut the fuck up once <laughs> uh, people know me and I like them. <laughs> And I think that's that part that I that I reject with the whole like introverted extroversion. For sure. I completely reject it, and that's why my favorite people are introverts because when they do spend time with you, it's with intention. Yeah. And also, there's like deep thoughts usually happening that they're getting out with you. Yeah. So, I, <laughs> which I, is I, how we have a podcast. <laughs> right. Exactly. Uh, and funny enough, I don't like extroverts usually. I find yeah. them annoying, and I'm like, I feel like. You're stealing my show, man. Do you ever worry that that's how people feel about you if you feel that way? Because I love love extroverts. (laughs) I feel the total opposite. Like, yes, I need the fire. I need the, you know, excited person in the room. Because you're not competing with them. Fair. Fair. I'm not competing for attention. I'm like, here, you can have it. (laughs) Emmy can be the local celebrity. I will be over over here. Perform. Go. (laughs) Dance. Dance for me. (laughs) Um, my next letter is N, which is for intuition, even though that doesn't start with an M, but it's cool. It's intuition. (laughs) Um, I will spoil this. Emmy and I have the same. Almost the exact same type. Except for she's an extrovert and I'm an introvert. So let's talk about what intuitive means. Uh, intuitive means to go, um, with your internal, uh, judgment, like, whatever your intuition is telling you the other type is uh that you could also get is perceiving so you're looking at your outside world being like what choice should i make Mm. so this might be the difference of like i'll put it this way you're at a roulette table the intuitive person will be like you know i just got a good feeling about 56 Mm -hmm. i'm just put some chips down at 56 whereas the observant one will be like 
Wow, it's landed the last two times on this number. Next time it might be 56, and they'll put it down on 56. Love that, yeah. And you'll come to the same conclusion, but it's just off of, like, how you come there, right? Cool. I like that. Which it makes sense that both of us have intuition or intuitive as our type in dual work to relate it back. Yeah, which I think is very interesting because it is about, like, assessing a situation assessing a situation what's your intuition telling you and i even teach that like in my childbirth classes like do you like tuning into your intuition how do you do that how do you because i feel like people are so detached from it but it is like such a a powerful like tool to use yes. like that like but we we like isolate our we like remove ourselves from what our body is telling us and what our gut is telling us and stuff like that yeah um the next time he and okay uh f uh the two types are feeling and thinking mm -hmm. so how do you <laughs> feel about a situation and um how do you like i'm not think your way through it feelers <laughs> yeah definitely not you cannot catch me not crying in a movie it doesn't yeah. matter which movie or tv yeah. show you you show me you get the swell of music and like yeah. tears out of me I, like i feel all the things well, okay what is the the one that makes you cry all the time Oh, so right now it's in Canto, yeah. but the exact moment yes. is Abuela during the last song, and I'm like thinking about it. No kidding, yeah. like I the nose wrinkle. Oh, no. uh, where Abuela apologizes to her three kids, uh, saying, yeah. "I'm sorry, I didn't like do better by you." Mm. Like you can already see that my is, face. Yeah, I'm I starting to cry. <laughs> um, but that's a really big moment that like will always make me cry. Yeah. Um, I can just hear the beginning of the song and I'm like, no, no, I know no, I see it. no. Um, but yeah, so this is I also, cry at every movie and show and my husband's like, are you okay? I'm like, oh, don't no. look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I am a bad bitch who has no feelings. Every, every TV and movie wedding, I will oh, cry. Always. Yeah. And is like, there a favorite for you? Like one where you were like, I want that wedding or? I, I've never I never wanted a wedding but um I do always cry when um April and Andy get married on Parks and Rec because she's like I don't like a lot of people I don't like anything but I like you and yeah. it's like really sweet it and is. I'm like it is I feel that uh, I feel you April <laughs> <laughs> the one after this is um perception versus judging or okay judging versus Perspective. Per prospecting? Prospecting. I don't know what that means. Um, you know what? I forgot this one. I do know it's like making a judgment call versus like um, more comfortable with a well when courses uh, ahead is well marked. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it says making things as they ought to be. Yes. Versus the other type is probably like allowing things to <laughs> they be. They would rather come up with five backup plans than mess up, and that's more is one thousand yeah. percent me. Again, probably. But I thought that's because I was a Virgo. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing up a different personality test to explain this personality test. Different. And that's why I think these things are fun because, like, it makes you say, "Oh, that that is me." So your particular type has a name depending on what you test as. Um, just like it does for most of these, right? Want me to look at yours? Uh, I have it right here. Okay. So I think it's funny because the common catchphrase right now is like, be be the protagonist of your own story and that kind of thing. Main character energy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm main char character energy, guys. <laughs> I'm. Turns I'm, out Emmy is the main character in the story. <laughs> at least I think it is. Um <laughs> Which is probably why people are like, wow, you're so confident. I'm like, yeah, I run this shit. Like, you I guys don't exist. I am better than everybody. Right. <laughs> um, I am the protagonist. So essentially it says protagonists, ENFJs, are called to serve a greater purpose in life. Uh, thoughtful, idealistic. These types strive to have a positive impact on other people and the world around them. They oh, that's what you're doing. Yeah. They rarely shy it. away from an opportunity to do the right thing. And when everything, oh, and when doing so, um, it, it's far from easy. They're born leaders. They're known to be uh, politician, coaches, teachers, and they're charismatic. Do you have the one where they say, like, the famous yeah. ones? The famous people who have been ENFJs? Yeah. So I can bring that up for you. It is Barack Obama, which, like, hell yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, Oprah Winfrey, yep. John Cusack, which is the best one so far yeah. of that list. Yeah. Like, um, Ben Affleck, oh. Um, and my girl, Malala. That's a good list. I adore this list. Um, yeah. I've always felt like an ENF, uh, Jay, and like... There was a point because the first time I took it, I was in in uh, in ENTJ, mm-hmm. and as I removed myself from a lot of my traumas and my needs to like see a world in a certain way yeah. due to that lens, I have only further and further gone into this ENFJ. I love that. Jay. That's so sweet. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, um, and I about- we talked about that with me as I took this when I was like 16 and I was an INFJ and I was taking it today and I was like this is going to be so different because I have grown so much and I'm answering these questions in a way that 16 year old Alex would have never answered them I got the same thing. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or not but I've always felt like I've always told people like I just became more deeply entrenched in my self and in my views Right. As I got older, because everybody always told me, like, you'll change your mind when you get older, like, or you'll become more conservative when you're older, which is hilarious uh, to me. Like, I think that's so funny. I have done the opposite. <laughs> yeah. I, I have only become more of a libtard as time has gone I, on, as like, I'm they were lovingly called in my house. a comrade. So, right. so I'm doing that, like, I've gone so far that way. But it's very interesting to see that I've just deeply become more entrenched in, like, myself right instead of having this shift kind of thing because i've i've always run into problems because i am myself (laughs) but now it's a positive thing so what is your type okay this is wait it really is funny that i am you are an advocate no way (laughs) is anybody shocked i love that me too isn't that crazy and i probably would have been like i don't what's that you know when i was a kid Mm mm-hmm and like I don't know what that is it says um, they tend to approach life with deep thoughtfulness and imagination their inner vision personal values and a quiet principled version of humanism guide them in all things I love the quote which is so true treat people as if they were what they ought to be and help them to become that they are capable of being so I, I think that's like perfect yeah all right let's see who, who do I have to live up to <laughs> Ooh, uh... Well, that's bad. <laughs> Ooh, uh... I can't live up to these people. I love it. Martin Luther King. Nice. Nelson Mandela. Yep. Mother Teresa. Oh. And Marie Kondo. Well, there you go. It even has a Y underneath. Like... Oh. <laughs> here's some they... information about why Marie Kondo's an INFJ. <laughs> I, I think that's fair, though, because... Oh, oh I could totally see Lady Gaga. Because I think if I were to compare you to any of those... That it would be Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. I would never compare myself to Lady Gaga. I feel like that's such a high bar. To <laughs> I'm just saying, off of those people that like flew by. Yes. I could see yeah. you and Lady Gaga <laughs> being like the same kind of human. Um, do you want to talk about weaknesses? Because sure. I love thinking about it in that way. Um, sensitive to criticism for me. Okay. Which is, I've done a lot of trauma work. Right. Now I'm like, bring it on, bitch. (laughs) I'm ready. I'm ready for some criticism. Teach me how to be better. (laughs) No, but really, please tell me something. Um, Reluctant to open up. Everybody knows that. That's why everybody thinks I'm a bitch when they yeah, first see me. I didn't think that. I honestly got so much shyness off of you. Yeah. My my I, my sister and my mom are both introverts. Yeah. And highly intelligent and very funny. Yeah. So they can come off cold yeah. and almost like bitey. And that that's how you reminded me. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm around an introvert who's yeah. very funny. Yeah. But and people think that I'm a bitch. Yeah. Like, and the RBF I, doesn't I, help. I don't, I don't, I don't relate to that <laughs> at all. But yeah, I um, I could see where someone, ow. <laughs> yeah. Um, would think that if they didn't understand, like, how to be respectful of somebody's boundaries. Yeah. People don't have to just be like. Hey, nice to meet you. Oh, let's be best friends. Everything, right? Let's overshare. (laughs) Because that's how I make friends does not mean that everyone should make friends that way. (laughs) No, I don't 
just do three. The last one is perfectionism, which oh, fair. I I don't I get that. I don't pick up perfectionism off of you. A perfection. I my even in my like pursuit to be like the best person I can be and being like yes, give me criticism. I have something to improve on. Is very where I get my mm. perfectionism, rather than like my space or like that kind of thing. I'm very much like, no, I'm I'm gonna be perfect. <laughs> Interesting. Well, I'll tell you guys my three. Unrealistic. Um, they basically feel like they could take anyone on and and like accomplish all the things. Fair. You, Thanks. But I I do believe in you. <laughs> I don't believe it's that unrealistic what you're doing. I think it's very doable, especially knowing you. Um, essentially, that I, I think I could take on the world's problems, which is accurate. That is a fault of mine. I am 100% that like new employee that's like there for two weeks. Like, hey, guys, so I know how to fix the system here. If we just listen to me, to I got to figure it you out. You probably did know they're all doing it wrong. <laughs> Any retail situation, <laughs> they're doing it incorrectly. <laughs> right. Uh, second one is overly idealistic, which we've experienced on this podcast over and over again. Yeah. And I know that about myself that I like see everything with like silver lining or yeah. like kind of that rosy glare. You're the Leslie Nope of, of right. the duo. But um, and I am like, here is the reality. And you're like, I don't think so. People are wonderful. So this should tell <laughs> right here hits home like one of those where it's a little uncomfortable to read it. So uh, it can come as genuine shock to protagonists when people violate their core values, such as truth or justice. And that's me, like, to a, to a T. To a T. Yeah. Because I'm always like, oh, how could you? And it's like, because they were dressed in black and they obviously had a villain laugh. Like, yeah. why are you surprised at me? <laughs> <laughs> um, last one is condescending. It's not. I think I've ever felt you were condescending. Um, may come across as patronizing. This is something that I've worked on mm -hmm. over the last, like, truly, like, ten years. Yeah. But especially in the last three to four, and it's the condescension comes from in insecurity, essentially. Yes. And it's this, like, why the fuck don't you know that? Like, get with a program. Um, and really, it's a thing of, I don't want anyone to question my authority on a thing. Mm -hmm. That's where mine came from. Fair. So, but it is a thing that I used to hear a lot of, like, yeah. damn, you could have been nicer when you said that. It's yeah. like, did I have to, though? Because did I have I, to be nicer? Because, because if I had to say it, then you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like I've, I've worked on the perfectionism a lot. Um, I, I consider myself, like, a recovering type A type of personality interesting yeah i, I like um, that you're saying recovery well i had a child and then <laughs> that was my well, i also went to therapy that helped and then i had a child and that was the universe telling me to slow down <laughs> to chill out so, so just to bring back a really old bit you guys yeah. want to get alex back into therapy share our podcast <laughs> i totally forgot i was like where is this going i don't remember what Call back to season about. one episode uh, one exactly. last episode um, but like share subscribe share our episodes like let's get alex back into therapy Maybe, no. you went first last time okay. so i'll go this time okay i am an eight wing seven that is my type. Okay. Explain. I don't know what a wing is either. So maybe ah. I took the wrong one. No, you, you took the exact one. Okay. Okay. This is someone who's a little obsessive with Enneagrams. Yes. yes. Emmy is the Enneagram expert in this duo. <laughs> duo. Okay. So there are nine types to Enneagram. And all of them have to do with, like I said, that, that great void you're trying to fill. Yeah. Um, so eight... Um, how it goes is this depending on the one you test into you could kind of swing one way to the to the other number or the other way to the, your like right number okay so essentially you can end up being like a type one with a wing of two because that's kind of like where you sit most of the time because okay. those still influence how Ooh, you behave how you behave yeah okay and so it really gives you like way more options 
of like how a personality can be and how it like presents itself essentially correct okay so even though you were a four oh shit i just revealed it <laughs> i'm sure they were waiting for it <laughs> they were on the edge of their seat <laughs> Uh, I got too far into explaining any of your I forgot good. I was doing a podcast. <laughs> Continue. I am a type four. <laughs> the individualist. Um, so even though you're a type four, you might want to read about type five and about type three and see mm-hmm. if there's sometimes like when you're stressed out, if you're like, oh man, I do kind of go more like this. Yeah. Or when you're more relaxed and around people. Or maybe you read type like whatever you are and you're like, that. It feels right, but not quite. Look at your wings and yeah. see if one of well, those... Well, when I took the test, I got two numbers. And oh. the number that I wanted, I was like, that's me, mm. right? But then I read more about fours, and I was like, no, this is me. <laughs> <laughs> so I assumed that I that four was right. I love it. And Cameron was even like, that's yes, you. That's you. <laughs> That's something I do suggest for any of the audience. When you interact with Enneagrams, I would suggest, yeah, you can take the test, but it's better off to read each type. Yeah. And whichever one, like, deeply calls you out, that's who you are. That's who you are. Yeah. It should almost feel like someone is creepily writing about you in thousands of books. It's also about, like, astrology. Yeah. It's like, damn. Dude, how did, how did you know that? You're right. How did you know that about me? So I would love to hear about the individualist, um, which is type four, and how you relate to this one, and maybe did it inform anything about you? Fours experience a deep conflict in that they long to connect with others, but they feel that because they are so unusual, few people are truly are able to truly see them as they are. And. This was like one of the first conversations we had when we first started podcasting about like, man, I would really like to podcast, but I don't know how to present myself fully. Yeah, it and is. And I struggle with that on a like regular basis of like all the facets of my personality and how they come together and how to share those with people without like overwhelming them or like that's weird. Yeah. For anybody listening, I just inched away. <laughs> for <laughs> just for the know. visual joke. For the visual joke. Um, imagine um, her slowly creeping away. Um, um, and that I, that's when I said, okay, I guess I'm a four. <laughs> what type did you think you were? Um, the other one was nine. And I was like, oh, oh. this one sounds better. So I'm going to be a nine. <laughs> so, Which is the peacemaker. If you guys don't know, um, one of my dual partners is Leanna with mm-hmm. expecting a blessing. She's a nine. Okay. Um, and it made so much sense because uh, we did these as a thing to get to know each other better. Mm-hmm. And she originally gave me one of her numbers and I was like, that doesn't make sense. That's not you. But a nine is a doula is such a great asset yeah. because their entire being is like, all right, everyone what's everyone's terms. Here we go present okay and now like negotiating the piece which is such a great like thing for for dual work which is where i could see i got some points of being a nine but like right definitely a four so a little more about fours they're defined by their sense of being special and different from other people they are often creative and present a a unique distinctive persona to the people around them Deepest fear is that they are flawed and missing out on some basic aspect of happiness that other people have access to. <laughs> this is just mean. Um, to cover this fear, they amplify what is different and special about themselves, looking for the niche in which they can be truly appreciated. Right? So. All of these, right. by the way, when you read Enneagrams, get real sad very fast. Like, yeah, it's, it's pretty mean. <laughs> it's not like um, Myers-Briggs that's like, oh, my God, look at you, leader. Oh, my God, so look great. at your insight. It's like oh, Enneagram is like. You're a protagonist? You're right. Enneagram is like, so I know what your mom said to you to break you. <laughs> you're like, she didn't say that. I know what really hurts your feelings. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay, and then I'll read key personality traits, and then you can. Um, yeah, go for it. Uh the key personality traits are distinct inner and outer presentation, um, prominent artistic outlets, 
quirky and endearing. I would call myself endearing. I I would yeah. definitely call you endearing. Um, melancholic expression, which is resting <laughs> bitch face. <laughs> right. Been there, done that. I used to get yelled at for, for it as a server. Like, oh, I've never Are been you there. not happy to be here? No, I'm not. I... I'm a hundred percent Buddy the Elf. That's like, I'm just smiling because smiling's my favorite. Like, <laughs> I love that so much. Um, <clears throat> may feel a sense of emptiness. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop reading. It's how we start. I can't take any more. Any gram could it be cool with you about this? <laughs> I'm a four, and I'm definitely a Slytherin because I cheated on the Pottermore <laughs> test originally. Oh, I'm, like, crying because I'm laughing so hard. Oh, yeah, oh. sure. Not covering up the tears of Enneagram beating you up. Um. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay. So, should I read just wing eight for you and we go off of my main type? Yeah, do I do? Type 8 is called the Challenger. Okay. Um, here's something that I will tell you guys off of the bat when I learned about the, uh, the different types. The the person gave examples, mm -hmm. and the example for an 8 is they are the first person to give up their seat on the bus. Mm -hmm. But they, if they are asked to give up their seat, they will ride on the bus longer just to make sure that no one has that seat. <laughs> That's some petty shit. <laughs> And it can, I like heard that example and I was like, oh shit. That's me? Yeah. That's me. Like the commitment to that <laughs> is insane. Um, and it comes from this like not wanting to be controlled. Yeah. That is, that's like the great yeah. point. I never want to be controlled by anyone or anything. Yeah. I am happy to do anything for people yeah. and like love on but them. But it's got to be your idea. Don't tell me what to do. Yeah. And my husband will run into this problem all the time. He'll be like, hey, can you go get the cups from the car that you left in there? And I'm like, I was about to do that. Right. But now, nothing. <laughs> I'm going to go sit my ass down. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so uh, eights are, defi uh, are defined by their desire to be powerful and avoid any vulnerability. Ding, 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 ding. Um, you already know these things, so you're oh, not crying yeah. like I was. Yeah, look, uh, <laughs> vulnerability has always been an issue of mine. My next tattoo, yeah. which I'm so excited to get this month, is actually a jellyfish. That That's something that I started to work on the last, like, five to six years of, like, being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And a jellyfish is the squishiest, softest-looking animal, but it's powerful. Yeah. And so I, I've been reminding myself of that in these moments. Yeah, and I feel like over cool. the years I've become more comfortable with vulnerability. Yeah. But it's still one of those where I have to, like, actively allow myself to be vulnerable. Yeah. Um, they present confident, assertive, and decisive, uh, and a decisive image to others. Eights yeah. can be argumentative and intimidating. It is important uh, to them to stand up for what they believe and to protect to protect those who are weaker than themselves. Or uh, doula, <laughs> also <laughs> known as a doula. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, and that's something I hear all the time. Like, either people meeting me after they've gotten to know me through a social media presence or like from afar however yeah. it may be of like i thought you were really scary I, I was really intimidated by you and i'm like i don't know why yeah i'm like squishy yeah um and that's something commonly talked about with eights is like these hard exteriors but they're just like squishy squishy little squishy sweet squishies. On the inside. um they are the types to also like start up animal shelters and stuff because yeah. they're like the baby animals and then you'll like they'll turn around at a gala and be like why aren't you giving money for the animals <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like the back and forth right. I love it. um deepest fear eats fear being vulnerable and powerless more than anything and to cope with this uh and cope with fear by always using strength and being in control yeah love it and I use it to my advantage as a doula. Yeah. Because I'm walking into situations fearful that I'm not in control yeah. or I'm not being feared or I'm not being taken serious. So yeah. I'm able to use my superpower for others. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I love it. 
Eights are motivated by their desire to be independent and in control. They resist appearing, feeling, uh, appearing or feeling weak and rejected, uh, reject any authority that restricts them. Which is what you just said. Exactly. Mom, like, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> don't tell me what to do. Um, yeah, exactly. So uh, they're known to be uh, independent, self-sufficient, fierce, confident-looking, uh, determination, stamina, very energetic and busy. Are you busy? A little. Are you a little Are busy? Are you a busy person? <laughs> a little busy. <laughs> a little busy. Um, fiery, uh, fiery passions and power, stubborn and headstrong, serious about control over their environment. Love it. Yeah. Um, I will say that eights are also called eight holes uh, because, again, one of the things I love about Enneagrams is you can... Um, have an unhealthy version of your type versus a healthy version and what that mm. looks like and like how can you lean into those vulnerabilities that you need to do so there's a lot more like eights that... can become tyrannical and intimidating scaring others off when they're in an unhealthy eight mm -hmm. i love that there's a reason why i started uh, learning about enneagrams about six years ago guys scared off a lot of people yeah how about for you? Mine four? is um, they become excessively moody, depressed, and fragile. Oh, I can't win. <laughs> um, they develop an ex extreme tendency to ruminate. What's ruminate? To like sit in. To like. All right, I quit. Let's talk about <laughs> Harry Potter. Perfect. <laughs> I would love for you guys to comment down below what your Enneagram is and what your Myers yes. Briggs is. We because... want to hear all of them. Yeah. And if you haven't taken them, I'll link them in the video description and the anchor description so you guys can take them because we would love to see if, like, I wonder if there's, like, from the people who will follow us, if there's, like, a certain number of, like, you see trends, right? Yeah. Like, we're both. NFJ is just one letter different. Right. Like, that's yeah. really interesting. I think that is. So. Um, because my feeling for people who know Enneagrams, my feeling is there's a lot of twos that are um, that are doulas because yeah. that's the helper type. They're the ones that give so much to the craft and yeah. to their work and to their community. I could totally see that. Yeah. Um, and they almost forget themselves in that helper role. Okay, you got to prove. Am I right or wrong? We need to <laughs> we need to test the hypothesis. I, I want to know. I want to know. I thought you were going to say we need to test the, the hypothesis if Emmy is a is a hub. I do want to test this, but I'm guessing that you know already. Um, I took the Pottermore one a long time ago. By the way, guys, just as a reminder, we're not fucking with Pottermore because uh, J.K. Rowling's a turf. So, and there's some anti-Semitic shit going on in there too. So. But it's a theme of the night. <laughs> That's a terrible thing. <laughs> okay, hopefully people have, st have stuck around long enough <laughs> to get to this point. But that's why we're using a knockoff Pottermore yeah, quiz. Exactly. So that we don't give uh, JK Rowling any more money. Or like what would lure you in, like, uh, to attract you. Right, exactly. So I'm going to say... Uh, crackling log fire because hot. Um, <laughs> hot, literally. Come on, guys. I that it. was good. That was Were you good. You for a laugh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. but... Sorry. I did like not a, perform. Like, you know, you're okay. Like a whole crowd is what I needed to yeah. laugh at that joke. We'll imagine. Uh, um, we can add in. <laughs> thanks. Uh, I, I see someone cheating. What do I do? Um, I'm just gonna, you know. Um, I'm going to tell the professor. Ooh. Yep. Snitches get stitches. <laughs> you know <laughs> what? <laughs> if he throws off the curve for the whole class, I, I have a higher like of. <laughs> I lost. Lost this. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the no one on Instagram right now. So it's literally just you and me. <laughs> they were like, um, <laughs> this is not doula related. Yeah. I'm out. But that's fine. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and if I was walking along, I'd want to go to the sea because the water calls to me. Uh, <laughs> what are you, Ariel? <laughs> I was thinking, like, I'm, I'm like a siren. Like, uh, something cooler than Ariel. Um, okay. I saw the best TikTok, which was like, guys, if a siren lured you, 
that means you weren't respecting boundaries. Like, you literally, like, went into the ocean to go hang out with a naked chick on a rock. Like, you deserve to drown. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> um, if you create a new potion, what would, that would give you one thing, what would you choose? Moon or stars? Did you answer all these questions? Yep. Okay. I just went real fast. Okay. I was because like, are these different split. questions? Nope. They're all the same. Okay. I was not paying attention. <laughs> I was really trying. I just love the idea of you just like, <laughs> right, I, I'm on a show. I got to <laughs> answer some questions. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's been a long day, guys. <laughs> it's um, been a long day <laughs> without you, my friend. <laughs> But I do sometimes have to remind myself what I'm doing. Um, what power would you like to have? I would like to have... I think mind reading still is, like, the best one. Yeah. Actually, I don't know if I'd want... Ooh, you don't know if you would want To hear that people's minds. Ah, so she went with... I'm good. I went with indivis- invisibility instead. Indivisibility? <laughs> indivisibility. <laughs> Under one god. <laughs> I want to be like America. <laughs> Uh, um, someone, oh, Cherish Bondula says she just took it and she's a two. You were so right. Yes. I was right. Uh, yes. Teresa, that's not surprising. It said, stop talking about me. Okay. <laughs> we'll stop. <laughs> Back to Potter. Um, four boxes are placed before you. Which one, which do you try and open? A small pewter box, unassuming and plain, with a scratched message upon it that reads, I only open for the worthy. I have to find out if I'm worthy. Um, you're, like, if you could pull the sword, try to pull the sword, wouldn't you try to pull the sword? Excalibur. Right. I, I know what we're okay. referencing. Okay. It's just, I was, like, thinking it through. Would I pull it? Well, off of the last two personality tests, um, even though I want to say no, it's probably yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably good. I, I have, like... A very curious mind. Mm. Even some things that I really, truly don't care about, I still want to know. Perfect. You would have been the great monkey to send out to test out that red bush over there to see if it worked <laughs> out for the rest of us. I can't tell if that's mean or not. <laughs> like, I can't tell if that was like a, a bird. I don't know. <laughs> that's where that condescension came out and I... <laughs> It's okay, my feelings are hurt, but I couldn't tell. I'm like, would it have been a good thing to be that monkey that helped everybody out? Or I'm so sorry. Um, yeah. What magical creatures would you like to study? Centaurs, mer people, ghosts, vampires, werewolves, or trolls? Mer people. I ended up choosing the ghosts because I was thinking about the Harry Potter and like universe. Those are cool ghosts, but in like this world, I'm really scared of ghosts. Ah, I see. I see. The Harry Potter world, this seems cool. Right. Right? There's scarier things in the Harry Potter world. Like the mer people. Ghosts scare me. The the mer people in Harry Potter are pretty scary. (laughs) One of your mates has cheated. Lie and say you don't know because I'm not a snitch. Um, I I feel like that was directed at me. It was. Because you said you would tell them. You can't you can't tell authority. Like, let the person cheat. They're fine. It's, what is he going to do to hurt you? It didn't have the one where I could just, like, talk to the person. Because that's really what I wanted to do. Yeah. It's be like, hey, cheating is not okay. Don't right. do it. Right, right, right. Or at least the, like, do you want to join my tutor group? Like, like you know what I mean? You, yeah. yeah. No, I, I hated school. And I'm very, like... Down with the system. Down right with the system. All right. You ready? Yep. I have a feeling mine is not going to come up Hufflepuff. It is not. Whoa! Y'all, that's a that's a surprise because I relate this house to nerds. Uh, like actual nerds. Hufflepuff? Ravenclaw. Oh, Ravenclaw. I, oh, is that are, one are yours? You, no, this is yours. I cannot believe it came up Ravenclaw for me. Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> I don't know if I, I buy this. I don't know if I buy this. There's no way that Envy is the Ravenclaw and I'm the Hufflepuff. <laughs> Holy shit! Um, all right, let's see why it says you're a Ravenclaw. Oh my god, my next one is Slytherin. My mind is blown. I can see that. Um, 
Uh, welcome to Ravenclaw. Our uh, emblem is the eagle, which soars where others cannot fly. Our house colors are blue and bronze. We pride ourselves on intelligence, creativity, individuality, wit, learning, and our common room is found at the top of Ravenclaw Tower behind a door. Enchanted knocker. Traits, uh, intelligence, wit, creativity, imaginative, curiosity, individuality, and eccentricity so notable people my girl luna lovegood cho chang who was given no personality in either the books or the films and was honestly just a person, just a person just of, standard. it was a way to put asian, re- asian representation in so they had to name her cho chang um personality to go yeah on. and professor flitwick who i would I would tattle to in this. <laughs> <laughs> Who you would snitch to. That is... How sure are we of these being accurate? I don't think they're accurate at because all. Because if the the URL is go to quiz.com results <laughs> underscore sorting hat, uh, sorting underscore hat. I can tell quiz. you these are the questions that are asked on Pottermore. Oh, fair enough. So I feel like it has to be close. Right. All right I'm a Hufflepuff, which... My second is Gryffindor, so fair enough. I got 78% Hufflepuff and 72% Gryff- or Sly- Slytherin, which doesn't surprise me. What was yours? You got 86 Ravenclaw and 85 Slytherin. You could really be in either one. Right. Yeah. Um, the badger and animal that's often underestimated because it lives quietly until attacked. Our house colors are yellow and black, and our common room lies one floor below the ground on the same corridor as the kitchens. Is that a fat joke? <laughs> um, we pride ourselves on hard work, loyalty, devotion, fairness, just patience, and kindness. I like that. I feel like that's me. <laughs> Noble people. <Just> dead. Tonks, <laughs> Cedric Diggory, and uh, Professor Sprout. I like that. I, I'm look, a fan. So, when I took the Pottermore test years ago, yeah, I was upset because I didn't test into Gryffindor because I always felt like a Gryffindor. Yeah. I'm always up. I was like always up for a fight. I am courageous. Like there's yeah. these things. And, and they, it, in the in the movies, they're like that is the best house. We right. need to be in it. We're not right. gonna. We're not gonna explore any other. No, yeah. for sure. And I like so related to like a like a Harry where he's like you just do it. Like, yeah. Where this is what we do. That when I came up Hufflepuff. I was so upset because I'm like, there's no way. And someone explained it of like, you're willing to take on a fight for a person. Yeah. Not just like a value system. Not just because, yeah. You're doing it for somebody. For a reason. And then when they pointed out like the badger and how that's a really fearsome creature. And like, you know, there's the honey badger that will can take bullets. But now you are a Ravenclaw. An eagle. Oh. Don't worry, I'll still call you one. <laughs> a Hufflepuff. Hufflepuff. I think I'm just going to keep that one forever. I'm that. Right? I'm going to clean Slytherin then, because I feel like I have more evil than people know. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> I find that Slytherins are not evil. Oh, they're yeah. they're hyper-motivated. So, and I, I enjoy that in people. Yeah, I like it. Well, this was like a fun little weird episode. I mean, hopefully you guys liked it, got to know us a little better. Yeah. If not, okay. <laughs> we'll see you next time. I don't know what else to say. Okay. <laughs> That's on you. <laughs> Again, like we're not trying to be the boring doula <laughs> podcast. We're trying to be a podcast first. Fun and, and right. you know, like. I think get to know, share our, share us a little bit better, get to know other people better, like, like the people who follow us and listen to us better, like, we want to build those kind of relationships and stuff. You know, and here's the thing is, like, we've said it before, like, when we've talked about, like, the niching episode, if you haven't, go back and listen to these episodes. That's a good one. But, yeah. uh, the niche episode, we spoke about how, um, you hire a doula because of how you connect with them. Yeah. And we're trying to connect with you guys and show a bit more of us, so you keep choosing us yes. every time yeah. to be your favorite doula yeah. podcast. And to just talk about the niche thing, um, since that episode, because I talk about that episode if I wasn't sure about, like, should this be my niche? Like, oh, I don't know. And since then, I've decided 1,000%. Yes. And it's funny because somebody asked me, told mentioned today that I was leaning into my fatness, and I'm like, yeah. I 
I am because I think that's where I need to be. I so, love that. I was very hesitant, but now I'm like, nope, that's 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 it. Like that's plus where size I people is where I need to be. So I love that, and I I love that kind of growth, and like that's really neat. Aww. I'm super excited for you. We're gonna make me cry. Yeah. <laughs> um. And maybe you guys share with us if, like, there's any episode that's affected you in that kind of way where, like, you're like, yeah, yeah. actually. Because we've heard, we've heard people tell us about the niche episode, about it being really helpful and helping them, like, be confident in their niche and things like that. So I've had several people this week uh, because our prior episode that we recorded was Scope. Yeah. And our conversations around who to pick and, like, that kind of thing really affected them. Yeah. And they, they're reconsidering, like going back for different training now Love it. because they're like what if there was things i needed to learn yep. and i didn't so yep. and there's been plenty of people trashing some of the big organizations and i'm here for it all right <laughs> shockingly i'm here for it <laughs> um all i can think of is that 80s song of like we didn't start the fire you guys did yeah. uh, <laughs> that, that can be our like unofficial theme song <gasps> We should do it. Doesn't that go? I think we should do that with like a MIDI <laughs> sound to it. So what's dumb. a MIDI? Like the like uh, the organ sounding music like from like the eighties of like dee 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 dee. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we didn't start the fire. <laughs> exactly. It was no. always burning. No, 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 See, no, no. I think that's I think Love that's it. a perfect. So I love it. It's in it's in lore now. Yes, that's gonna be our motto. Right. Against the fire it was always burned <laughs> <laughs> until we get sued for copyright infringement. That's but. why I'm saying do a MIDI. Yeah. Change it, 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 it a little it's bit. A little different. It's a little different. We all know what we're doing, but. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for hanging out for this <laughs> wild ride of an episode. If you want to hear more of these, let us know because this was really fun, yeah. and we'll see you later. Well, I'm Emmy the Birth Wizard. <laughs> we never introduced ourselves in the beginning. Oh, shit. I'm Alex Barr. In case you didn't know, this is Alex Barr. That's Emmy the Birth Wizard. <laughs> we'll see you next time on a less chaotic episode. <laughs>